Welcome to another episode of In the Gardens. I'm horticulturist Greg Lesk and we're here at the Amarillo Botanical Gardens. We're actually here in the vegetable garden. So if you hadn't got your vegetable garden going, it's definitely time. Uh, I don't see any possibility of a frost after this. And we got a rain last night, so that makes it even better. These tomatoes here were planted yesterday just in time for the rain. We would have liked to have gotten them out sooner, but we just kept calling for low temperatures, so we kept them in the greenhouse, and uh, and we got them out, and so they're going now, and, and things will look up from here. You might look, see that we've done this a little different than before. A lot of people are going to an upright growth on the tomatoes and pruning them. Yes, we like to prune the tomatoes, and it helps in a lot of different ways. Pruning them removes the side shoots that aren't fr productive. It also, we, we keep the foliage off the ground. Uh, when we get rains and that mud splashes, it splashes the, the bacteria up on the uh, leaf and it travels up the plant, and that's where we get a lot of disease. And also, to help minimize that, if once you've planted your tomatoes, if you mulch them heavily, that's what we'll do as soon as it dries up a little bit. Mulch them heavily, it keeps the ground from, uh, the soil from splashing up, and uh, it really helps with the disease, which is our biggest problems with the uh, tomatoes in this area. So we've got several varieties of tomatoes here. We've alternated a varieties planting. That helps ensure pollination a little better. Uh, plants typically cross-pollinate better than they self-pollinate within the same variety. So alternating varieties helps with the pollination. We also like this. This is a cattle panel. It's, it's strong. Uh, it won't blow over and it won't uh, fall over like the tomato cages do often late in the season. And uh, it's reusable. One of the things I really like about it, if you know much about tomatoes, they are buzz pollinated. They're pollinated by uh, hum uh, bumblebees, particularly, that um, do a little differently. They, they buzz the, the flower bloom and cause pollination to drop into the right area on the flower to cause pollination. So that's why your grandmother might have said, you know, beat your tomatoes with a stick. Well, she was pollinating. She didn't realize it, but she was pollinating. So with this uh, cattle panel here, we can go by here daily and tap and buzz pollinate, and that really does help with the fruit set. Another thing is the, the pruning. And uh, we'll talk about that. We'll show you how to prune the tomatoes. But we're going to grow the tomatoes straight up. Uh, and we're going to keep tying them on the panel. We're not going to let them get great big bushy and out of control. They're going to put all their energy and fruit more than growth. And by doing that, we remove those little side shoots. Tomatoes typically will grow, they can grow one leaf at a time. One leaf will be a side shoot that will use nutrients. The next leaf will be a fruiting, flowering leaf and uh, out there at the uh, node. And so removing those uh, side shoots really helps the tomato produce better, put the energy into fruit. Um, besides that, we're gonna keep our tomatoes pretty wet. Uh, they really do best if they're pretty moist all the time. Uh, stressing between wet and dry causes blossom to fall off before even after they're pollinated they can fall off so keeping your tomatoes evenly moist and by mulching heavily it's easier to keep them evenly moist like that so uh, we're going to show you how to prune the tomatoes now we're going to prune this tomato first thing we're going to do we're going to move remove these lower leaves and you want to do it with a clean a uh, sharp tool to remove those uh, lower leaves because those are just going to cause disease to travel up the plant. Then here's this side shoot. We're going to leave the plant. You can you can let the plant go to one or a couple main shoots, but we're going to remove this side shoot because you see right up here we've already got flowers forming, and we're just going to take and lots of times those will just snip off, or pull off, or you can you can again use your cutters to remove that. Now that will keep that side shoot from robbing nutrients and stuff uh, water from the development of the fruit up here and so that helps another thing about tomatoes is they produce uh, roots along their stem very easily in fact this one you see the knobs on the, the stem here 
those are adventitious roots already wanting to form. There's already some forming here at the ground level. So we can plant this tomato uh, deep, or you could even lay it down and lay it, do it like a trench, but then bring it back up to the trellis. And you have to tie it onto the trellis. Tomatoes aren't natural climbers, so tie it onto the trellis and work it through the trellis as you go through the summer. Then water it in good, uh, fertilize with a good organic uh, vegetable fertilizer for the summer and keep it moist and enjoy tomatoes. So let's talk about peppers. It's time for planting them as well. First, you want to start with good, healthy peppers. You can get by with some junkier tomato plants, but peppers are less forgiving. So start with good ones. If you're able to start yours at home and do a really good job with them, keep them from getting laggy, that's great. If you're not, it's best to go to a reptile nursery and get good plants. Um, this plant was topped uh, at, at a young age. You know, you'll see peppers are just one uh, from the nursery, usually one uh, st stem comes straight up. Pinch the top out of it, make it branch out. You'll have a lot more peppers at the end. Now, when you plant this, of course, you're doing a great job of uh, making your soil. Okay. Of course, you're doing a great job of working your soil and amending it first, right? And then you want to plant this just slightly lower than it is. Remember the clay. Rem remember the. Jeez. Oh Remember the uh, sphagnum peat moss that's used in the potting soil is a wick and it wicks out moisture and away from the plant right where it needs it at the root. So cover it up lightly but not too much and then plant the tomato or the potato and plant your pepper plants. Since we're not using the uh, tomato cages anymore, I really like them for peppers. Um, they you know, there's nothing worse than having a great big nice pepper plant at the end of the season. Loaded with the pepper, we get a strong wind or a rainstorm and it breaks some branches out and you lose a lot of pepper. So, tomato plants, uh, cages, work great for this. They just give a little support to the plant as it grows. The tomatoes are usually, cages are too tall so I cut them down and make them uh, work. I like to use the green ones for sweet uh, peppers and the red ones for the hot peppers and that way you can tell the kids stay out of the red cages and they know that those are hot and then just keep it fertilized and watered well through the season and you should have great luck with peppers in our climate if you plant them out in the full sun and you just tend them a little bit okay we're over here at the this trellis that we've created for uh, pole beans and cucumbers if you've never grown uh, cucumbers up on a trellis, you really need to try it. It gets them off the ground, away from disease. The fruit hang down very nicely, very clean. Easy to pick is the key to that. I like uh, several varieties. Straight Eight's a good one. It, it goes really well on the pole. You, you just simply start the seed in the ground. Do not start your cucumbers inside. Start them right in the ground where they're gonna grow and they do best. Make sure you get a vining type of cucumber. Most are, if it's got the name Bush in the uh, name of the cucumber, it's great for a pot or in the ground, but it will not cl climb the trellis. They just require a little bit of uh, work to keep them on the trellis through the summer, but they'll come up here and it'll be fantastic. On the other side, we're gonna put pole beans. Now I really like these uh, Asian yard long beans. We've just started uh, a couple years ago planting them very much. They, they uh, climb really well, they produce very well, and they uh, really have some great flavor. You don't have to let them get to uh, a yard long because if they get that big they're going to be tough but you'll learn to keep them like about a pencil size and they'll get a couple feet long and once you break them and snap them, uh, there's a handful of uh, beans, green beans in each bean. And so that's, that's wonderful. And they're just great to pick. If you ever picked uh, bush uh, beans, you know that that's laborsome. It's on the ground low. But these are up where it's so easy to see them and pick them. So try just try some yard long beans this year and see how you do. You see in the background here, uh, the brassicas, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage are growing, some kale back there as well. Nathan Brantley, our student 
Horticultures has been working hard this spring getting this garden going, building these trellises, starting the tomatoes, and they're looking really good. We're glad to share our knowledge so you can do a better job in your home garden.